I know from birth I'm a Jew. Only I know that my forefather missed the way. I grew up alongside every other Igbo youth. We kept on hearing that Igbo people came from Israel. There was a story my mom told me at the age of six years. I never forget. He said, the Igbos are Jews. <laughs> A sound of a people casting off two centuries of colonialism, returning to what they say are their native roots. Greetings, brothers and sisters. One love. In the name of the most high power. Today I want to title this video, Who God Bless, No Man Curse. And who God Curse, No Man Bless. And why it's good to repent. After reading the scripture over and over a couple times, I really look at Adam and Eve's story and show you that that the most I gave the commandments to Adam and Eve and warned them about the serpent, that they should not link up with the serpent, right? And anyway, Adam and Eve fell and broke the most high commandments which he had given them. And when the most I approached Adam, he said, Adam, have you eaten of the tree? And I told you not to eat of and Adam said, It was my woman. And Moses said to Eve, Woman, what have you done? And she said, It was the serpent. After reading that thing over and over, I noticed that Adam and Eve never said to the Most High, I'm sorry, the Most High Power, I've broken your commandment, please forgive me. They never repented and asked for forgiveness. They passed the blame off on somebody else. But something that I noticed from this conversation is that right after that, the most I curse Adam and Eve. Curse them and keep them out of the Garden of Eden. Keep them out of Israel. And after that, they were doing so many sacrifices and stuff that they were doing. So the Father could forgive them for their sin. But like the most I said, you know, so before one of his prophecies don't come through the heaven and earth shall be destroyed. So he's clearly telling us that once he speaks something, it cannot come back. It will not come back void. So if Adam and Eve would have repented during the time when they broke the Most High commandments and was confronted, it's a big chance that the Most High probably would have forgiven them for their sins. But none of them repented. And it takes us all the way back to the Israelites. When the Most High was even calling up on the Israelites and telling them that if my people were called by my name, which means when Moses went into Israel, into Egypt, and called out the children of Israel, he called them out by the name, I am that I am, Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. So now the Most High is saying to the Israelites, if my people who are called by my name will turn away from their sin and seek my face I will heal their land so you see that was repentance that the most I was calling upon our people to repent and to come back to him they repented not now they fulfill the curse of Deuteronomy 28 and of Revelation 12 of the woman fleeing into the wilderness and the whole Deuteronomy 28 verse 48 and onward when you tell them about they shall be sold into slave ships and lose their heritage and they shall be he shall the, more, the power shall be the head and we shall be the tail and we shall be in need of all things the point of what i'm trying to make is this that we people from the western world were dragged over here in slavery and most of the people in africa and other nations are suffering their own individual curse from a long time ago when the Most had called on these nations to repent and to come to him through prophets and signs and wonders and they didn't come unto him. Great empires like Egypt, the Babylonian, the Ethiopian Empire and all of these other empires that suffer today are suffering from a curse that the Most High had placed on us because the same thing with Adam and Eve. We broke his commandments and we never repented and come back to him. And once the Most High put a curse on us, because if you read in um, Deuteronomy 28 when he was speaking to the Israelites, in the beginning he tell them that, in the beginning of, of, of Deuteronomy, he told them that if they follow his laws, that he will lift them high above all nations. 
And as you read going down more to like verse 48 and so where it come on to the curse, we need to tell them that if we broke his break his commandment, then we will suffer these curses. And we are suffering these curses today. And these curses was before Christ came and it's after Christ. But the confusion is with people now. When we try to tell them that we're the Israelite and we're suffering a curse, they always say, we came from Africa, right? And I said, all right, yeah, that's true. Nobody had didn't tell us about, you know, our exile from any other land to Africa. Our whole history seemed to start from us coming out of slave ships. But there's other history books with biblical understanding that links us in to us running away from our land, from, from Jerusalem, into West Africa, Ethiopia, and many other places that we ran. We've been running from our homeland even before 70 AD. And there was a great outbreak during the time of Christ and the disciples and many people start to run to different parts of the land and stuff like that. But that's why when you tell somebody that we are the Israelite, they don't believe you. Because they say, all right, we, but we came from Africa. And I just noticed something that took place on the TV the other day, about a year or two ago. When the war broke out in Syria, most of these Syrian people fled into the into Europe, right? Just say, they, 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 just say for instance, the people from Syria were white people, and they ran into Europe and hide themselves amongst white people, right? And live there for at least a thousand five hundred years. Would they be European or would they be a Syrian? So that's what happened to us. So because we ran into West Africa for so long and we, we've been in there for 1,000, about 1,500 years or so. So now when we were dragged to the West, people are saying that, oh, the Africans have got dragged over here. And we're not trying to deny ourselves or detach ourselves from, from our black brothers and sisters. We're just speaking truth and trying to make a point to show the Jamaican people and the people in Trinidad, America and all the other islands in Brazil and all these people mainly us who were dragged here on the slave ship to show that we are suffering a curse and like I said who God bless no man curse and who God curse no man bless right so since our forefathers and our foremothers had brought us into this curse that they inherit because they're the one that brought us into this curse by turning their back on the most high the most had turned his back on them you understand when we had so many enemies around us and just look how people treat us today in the west all the other nations look at the way how they treat us they look down on us when they see us coming by they're pulling up their car doors like we're the scum of the earth you know doing the lowest jobs and stuff but what we can do now once we come to the conclusion and acknowledge that our forefathers broke the covenant of the most and brought us to suffer this curse what we can do now since we know that we have inherited this curse what we can do is repent and change. We can do exactly what Adam and Eve didn't do. We can do what our forefathers and mothers didn't do. During the time of when they were living in Israel, we can repent and seek forgiveness and don't follow the full, the full step of our father. Because, cause, trust me, if this has been going on for us for so long, it means that it's something that we have inherited from our forefathers. It's something that we're doing. And I tell people all the time, we have so many black churches all over the world, especially in Jamaica and many places. But when you look at the condition of our people, you have to really wonder, does God really hear our prayer? We're suffering a curse. We're not suffering the curse of what they tell us about Ham, look at his father, Ham, Canaan, look at, his, at Noah's naked body. We're not suffering that curse. We're suffering the curse of an Israelite. And if you doubt it for the people who don't know this truth, read Deuteronomy 28 and then go back and look at the history of us slave people and many other of the, 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 in the native Indians and many other people. And you will see how much we, we fit that curse. You know, people think because if they do something for an extended time, once their conscience eased from what they have done, they think it's forgiven. No, we have to literally open up our mouth and seek repentance. And it's best to re acknowledge our sins instantly as they happen. We, we acknowledge them, repent on them. Because what happened is this now. When the Mosai put a curse on you, if he say, you're going to suffer for six years, trust me, you're going to suffer for six years. If he say, you're going to go through tribulation for 20 years, and your children, children will go through this tribulation. Once he speak this 
curse on you, it's going to happen. And these curses come upon us when we keep breaking the most high, especially for the ones who know. When we know we keep breaking the most high, it's worse for us. But these curses come upon us because we keep breaking the most high, and we're not repenting, and we're not changing, and that's why our lives is the way it is. Nobody cannot tell me that what people in Africa is going through, what we as slaves, people in Jamaica are working for 50 US a week. 5,000 Jamaican dollars minimum wage. Are you serious? Is this not a curse on our people? And the only way we can get better for our family, for our economical growth, we have to migrate to another country. And it's not like we can migrate to Africa or anything. We have to migrate to European countries, Asian countries. And, we, and people don't think we're living a curse? You think this is normal? You think we were just placed here to be the scum of the earth? When our history shows that we were kings and queens back in the ancient time? To where we are today? We are the children of Israel. And we are suffering the curse of breaking the Mosaic Covenant. We fulfill every one of those curses in Deuteronomy. We fulfill all of them. The only ones in Deuteronomy we don't fulfill is at the beginning, the blessing. But every part of the curse, the, the slave ships, that we shall be sold, the husband shall lose his wife, the children shall be given to another family, we shall work in the field. All of that is us. Awesome. And the cycle is going on and on and on. And the more as this thing keeps going on and on, I look at our people over here and the more we're getting indulged in more sins. This is the story of the Igbo, 25 million strong, a people once under siege by their very own government. Biafra declared its independence. And a people once captured and shipped across the Atlantic by the hundreds of thousands. A people who helped build America, and a people whose descendants are now discovering their Igbo roots raising questions of cultural identity for countless African Americans. Many African Americans actually do not know that they have Igbo heritage. The chances of their being Igbo is much, much higher than their chances of coming from Ghana or from Western Nigeria. If you're from the right county in Virginia, you'd probably have a 60% chance of having Igbo ancestry. It's a story of the strength of belief, ancestry, and community. Wait, no.